Hello guys, this is Pavel Oskarov from Laravel Daily Team and YouTube channel Laravel Business and today is a show time for live coding. And today in live mode I will show you how to use automated testing uh, with Laravel and with continuous integration with Travis CI. So you will see how it all works and maybe you will be tempted to try it yourself if you haven't already. So the workflow I will try to break the test, then pass the tests and uh, stuff like that. So here I have a demo project generated with our quick admin panel, nothing complicated, just list of projects with logged in user. And here I have a suite of tests, just simple four tests, test login page, test whether home is loading properly, test user list is loading and project list is loading. Nothing complicated. And I can run those tests by going to a terminal and run PHP unit. And then it will probably show that four tests are passing, four tests, all good. And to prove that it was actually working, let's change that. Let's assert that the status is different. And let's see if the error appears. So our automated tests are working. It will probably fail, F, so failed asserting the status. So these are our tests, which should be 200. And now what we will do, we'll try to change something and then run the automated test again, but not locally. Instead, with Travis CI, it will spin a totally virtual server and see how our pull request to GitHub will fail or succeed. We will see. So let's imagine a real life scenario. Someone gets a task that in the project list, so here there should be a button button to add a new project, but it isn't here, so there is a bug. Someone should fix it. So we give the task to a developer who is outside of the office, in other part of the world, whatever, to fix the bug. And then that developer goes to the repository. I will use source tree as an example and creates a branch. So a bug button, for example, creates a branch. And then they try to fix that bug, right? So go into PHP Storm. And if we go to our index blade for projects, we see that the button is actually there, but it's hidden under, under can statement. And there is a typo here. It should be project create instead of projects create. That's how our uh, policies and middlewares are named. And if we refresh the page now, the button should appear which means the bug is fixed. Now they would want to, that developer imaginary would want to commit the change, right? But to his branch, so commit, bug fixed, right? But that's to the branch and then there should be a pull request to the master branch or to develop branch to whatever main branch you use uh, to basically to pull the request and to deploy the change. And it's done via GitHub. That's how we do that. That's how I personally do that. Maybe your workflow is a little different, but let's go and create a new pull request. Compare pull request and we would uh, do a pull request from bug button branch to the master. So that's uh, done by hypothetically different developer by different part of the world. And I am the manager who should approve the change, right? and see what happens. When I create a pull request, uh, Travis CI automatically runs the test. So this thing, it's queuing automatically building the virtual machine and running automatic tests, the same ones that I've run before, to make sure that that uh, change just didn't break anything else, anything before. And if we go to our Travis CI dashboard, I've opened it in Firefox, this is how it works. So currently it's the last build, but we will be waiting for a new build. It will start automatically. Now it's building a virtual machine, so building a Linux, Linux machine. Here we go. Started, running for two seconds. Starting MySQL, starting like SSH key, cloning the, the branch, the exact branch that we need. And here in our code, we have a file which specifically specifies .travis.yml, specifies what we need to run that Travis build. So we need to copy the env file, then do composer install, and then this is the main line. Run PHP unit with excluding some test group, and then run code analyze, which is Lara stan package, so static analysis. And this is how it's already working. So 
doing copy the file, composer install, and installing the composer fresh. So connecting, downloading, so there's no cache. Nothing here, we go down, and after running composer install, it will run the test. So automatically PHP unit, and if it doesn't throw any errors, see all green for tests, for assertion, then we'll try to run code analyze, which is Laristan. If you're not familiar with that, I will show you in some other video. I will uh, shoot some different video and command exit with zero, done, build exit with zero, with no, uh, uh, no errors. And see what happens in GitHub now. Uh, build started, some checks haven't completed, but at some point soon it will go to green. Actually, if we refresh the page, maybe it's already green, yes. All checks have passed and now we are green. We are automatically informed that that uh, pull request is okay to merge. Of course, we didn't verify, like we didn't go to browser to test. So probably it should be a pull request to develop branch and then someone goes to the server to test it. But at least we didn't break anything that was working previously. And we confirm the merge and we delete the branch. So this is, I've showed you, um, Shiny, shiny scenario where everything is smooth and everything goes right and it's automatically tested. Now I will show you what happens if it breaks. Uh, so let's imagine someone doing the same, I don't know, same uh, bug fixing or something and breaks something. For example, in project controller for the same list, we miss that letter, so typo, projects, which doesn't exist, that model doesn't exist. Oh, actually, before that, let's get back to our master branch and let's create a new branch. So master, we get back to master, we pull it down for the latest changes. That should be done always, by the way, before starting any coding, so pulling from the, the main branch, and now we get to branch, I don't know, feature something. So we create something, some imaginary function, and by doing that, now we introduce a bug, a type, right? Projects all. And this should be covered by our tests, uh, this one. But if I, for example, forgot to launch it locally uh, on my computer and I commit the code with that bug, what do we do? We commit code with bug, code with no bugs, apparently, maybe, we commit and then we do the same pull request and let's see what happens in Travis CI and in GitHub and everywhere. And then you will understand the whole purpose, the whole, I don't know, the whole uh, thought behind that. So pull request feature something to master, we create pull request. Same thing, no conflicts and initializing Travis CI build. So then we wait for uh, for a minute or so to actually start. There we go, it started, but uh, let's wait for more things to appear. Okay, it's running Composer install again, and let's wait for our test suite to succeed or fail, and if it fails, what actually happens? And if you can see, there's a failure, as expected, because we received 500 code instead of 200, and then also static analysis failed, call to static method on unknown class. So build exit with one, which means error. And now let's go to GitHub and let's see. Checks have failed. It's not green. Failing after one minute. And then also we can go to our Slack channel, which we have by the way, the integration. Build has failed. As you can see, build has failed and we can click and see more details. Uh, what happened, so a developer himself would see that on Slack and everyone else would see that. So that would prevent every, any new code to break something uh, from the old code that was working. So that's the first step, the technical testing, uh, automated testing with Travis CI and PHP unit. And then the manager that would oversee would only have to test the how it works basically, but not the code. So these tests, if you have proper testing, my example is really simplified, but if you have proper tests built, it would prevent uh, a lot of bugs from appearing. So I hope it was useful and the whole purpose of that video was to 
first show you that you should do automated testing and then how it works with Travis CI or any other continuous integration tool. Uh, and by the way, Travis CI isn't free, so it costs uh, $79 a month, which is maybe quite a lot. Uh, so you can look for other solutions, other tools, but in the long run it's a really worth, uh, worth the investment to ensure the quality of your projects.